You don't have to be a genius to make other people do what you want. All you need are a few clever mind tricks. These are the kinds of methods that are backed up by scientific research. You'll be amazed at how one simple facial expression can make all the difference to your power. If this is your first time visiting our channel, make sure you subscribe. And while you're at it, check out our latest addition to the family, The Trendy, a cool channel for teenagers. Today, we're sharing 10 cool psychology tricks to get what you want. Be a chameleon. We all know about the power of body language, but do you know how to use your posture to your advantage? There's a clever trick that will make people feel warmer towards you and therefore more likely to go along with whatever you want. It's all about copying. All you need to do is subtly copy their posture, mannerisms, and facial expressions. And they'll like you more without even realizing. You can then get them to copy what you do without them even being aware of what's happening. A study by New York University researchers found that imitation is a powerful tool. In the experiment, their testers mimicked the postures and movements of the participants. They discovered that this kind of copying made interactions go more smoothly. It also increased the amount they liked each other. This is due to something called the chameleon effect. Just like the chameleon matches its environment, people change their behavior to match the person they're interacting with, and they don't even realize it. The researchers suggested that this is down to the perception behavior link. The link is all about unconscious mimicry, which means that simply perceiving another person's behavior makes you more likely to behave that way yourself. Once you've copied the other person's body language, you can then lead them to unconsciously copy you. This technique is sometimes explicitly used to build rapport in counseling and business scenarios. Do them a favor. You're probably familiar with the expression, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine. It sums up the idea of reciprocity, that two people can help each other out and both gain from the situation. There is such a thing as the reciprocity effect, and you'll want to learn all about it if you're looking for an easy and pleasant way to get what you want. Robert Cialdini, a leading expert in the field of influence, explained how it works. The psychology professor suggested that we can all harness the power of persuasion in a positive way. You simply have to do someone a favor and then make a subtle point when they thank you. That will encourage the other person to do a favor back. This is how you do it. Once you've helped that person out and they thank you, don't wave away their gratitude. That's really important. Rather than responding to their thanks with a throwaway reply of, oh, it's no big deal, say something far more persuasive instead. If you're in a work scenario, respond by saying, of course, it's what partners do for each other. Or if you're in a social setting, say something like, of course, that's what friends are for. Make sure you label your favor as an active partnership. Then they'll view you in a positive light and feel compelled to return the favor. Prime the environment. Robert Cialdini had another tip for persuading people to do what you want. And it's a psychological strategy called priming. This is all about how words, images, and other stimuli in the environment act as unconscious cues to people. Particular representations or associations can activate a non-conscious form of human memory. When you're trying to use this to your advantage, you should present the cue right before you carry out your action. Cialdini points out the power of priming your audience with positive words or images and then immediately go going in with your request. There's a French study that we can use as an example of how this works in practice. A social psychologist tested the subliminal effect of seeing flowers during a romantic pursuit. An attractive young man stood next to different shops in a mall and asked women passing by for their phone numbers. One shop was a florist, one was a bakery, and the other was a shoe shop. The experiment found that when the man stood outside the florist, women agreed more favorably to his courtship than the other locations. The conclusion from this result is that the flowers were priming women to associate the man with romance and put them in a positive mood. Aim high. You've probably heard the foot in the door technique. This is when you ask for something small, get it, and then ask for something bigger. But have you heard of the door in the face technique? It's like the back to front version of foot in the door. It sounds counterintuitive, but what you do is ask for something outrageous that you know will be rejected. You aim for something ridiculously high that the respondent will definitely say no to. This is the metaphorical door slammed in your face. You retreat and then ask for something smallest. They will then say yes 
to the reasonable request. And actually, this was what you wanted to get all along. Researchers carried out experiments into this technique and published their findings in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. They tested how effective this rejection then moderation procedure could be by stopping passers-by on a university campus. First, they asked for an extreme favor. When that was rejected, they then asked for a smaller favor. There was greater compliance with this technique than when the requester just asks for the smaller favor to begin with. This is partly down to the contrast principle. In comparison with the initial larger request, the second request seems small and more reasonable. It also works because of social responsibility. When they refuse the first request, they might feel guilty or worry that they look bad. So saying yes to the second request helps them feel better about the situation. Use nouns. Humans have an innate need to belong to a group, and you can use this to your advantage. In her book, How to Get People to Do Stuff, behavioral scientist Susan Weinschenk explains how to do this. You need to use nouns instead of verbs. By using a noun, you identify the person you're talking to in terms of a group they belong to. They are more likely to behave in line with how that group behaves. To show how this works in practice, let's look at research that was published in the Social Cognition Journal. A Stanford interviewer was doing a survey about voting and asked one of two questions. He either said, how important is it to you to be a voter in tomorrow's election? The emphasis here is on the noun voter. Or he said, how important is it to you to vote in tomorrow's election. The emphasis in the second version is on the verb, to vote. So what were the results of this study? When the noun voter was used, more people actually voted the following day. Why did this happen? It's all because of our desire to belong and then act in accordance with our group. When you try this out, be sure that the noun you use invokes group identity. Focus on their gain. There are more ways of using linguistic techniques to get what you want, and this one is all about framing. The way you frame your requests can be the difference between whether you get what you want or not. Researchers at a German university carried out experiments to show the importance of how you present your proposal in a negotiation. They divided participants into sellers and buyers and gave them different ways of framing the deal. One way was to frame it as an offer. For example, the seller offers the refrigerator for a price of $160 or the buyer offers a price of $160 for the refrigerator. The other framing device was a request. For example, the seller requests a price of $160 for the refrigerator, or the buyer requests the refrigerator for a price of $160. Their results showed that both buyers and sellers were more likely to go with the deal when it was framed as an offer. In this scenario, they focused on what they were going to gain from the negotiation. This is in contrast to the request way of framing the deal. In that scenario, they focused on what they were going to lose. To use this in your life, make sure you emphasize what you're giving the other person as opposed to what they're losing. So you'd say something like, I'll give you my car for 9,000, rather than saying, I want 9,000 for my car. Use evidence. We've looked at ways of getting people to do what you want when you're face to face with them. But what about being persuasive when you're communicating and writing instead? Lillian Lee and her PhD students at Cornell University carried out research into the best ways to get people to agree with you online. And they found the top ways to bring people round to thinking the same way as you. They analyzed nearly two years of posts on Change My View. Users of this forum website invited others to challenge their views and present alternative opinions. The research team discovered the techniques that were used by the people who were most successful in convincing others to agree with them. And one of the big takeaways is that you should use evidence to back up your point. Those who use statistics, numbers, and examples sounded more convincing. Using EG and IE before they presented their arguments also strengthened their persuasiveness. Another related tactic is to use links. Linking to examples and outside sources played a big part in convincing others too. It seems like the old adage of safety in numbers comes into play here. If they think your point is supported by many others and has evidence to support it too, then they're more likely to agree with you. Eye contact. Eye contact is one of the most powerful and simple tools we can use when interacting with other people, but it's also pretty tricky. Stare too long and you might seem creepy. Look away too much and you might appear bored. But get the balance just right, and you can get what you want in various situations. You can use different eye contact techniques depending on what you hope to achieve. Let's start off with arguing. If you want to win an argument, 
then normal rules about eye contact go out the window. Don't worry about looking the other person right in the eye for too long. This is actually your goal. Holding your gaze will show strength. Do this not only when you're making your point, but also when you're listening to the other person. You could also try simply staring at their eyes while staying silent, and you might find you'll win the argument without having to say a single word. You'll want to use a different tactic when using eye contact to make someone feel comfortable. Rather than staring constantly, try the triangle technique. Look at one eye for about five seconds, then the other eye for the same amount of time, and then their mouth. Keep rotating this triangle, and they'll feel like you're really listening without feeling uncomfortable. And if they feel positive, they are more likely to do what you want. Telepathy. We've seen how body language and facial expressions can influence other people to do what you want. But what about going beyond the physical ways of communicating? How about trying telepathy? This psychic, mind-to-mind -mind communication involves exchanging feelings between a sender and a receiver. You might be skeptical about it, but if you want to give it a go, it's quite straightforward to try. You'll need to do it with someone who also believes and wants it to work. So, this is a good one to try with a close friend, partner, or family member. Firstly, you need to really believe that it will work. And then, you need to quiet your mind by meditating for a few minutes. Then, sit facing each other with your eyes closed. Visualize the receiver in great detail. And then, visualize a silver tube connecting both of your minds. Picture the message you want to send, and then direct this mental image through the silver tube. You might need to spend 15 minutes with this high level of concentration. The receiver should also imagine the silver tube, and focus on what they feel flowing into their mind. Once you've practiced in this way, you can try it out on others to get what you want. For example, when you're at a restaurant, you can attempt to attract the waiter's attention using your mind. Close your eyes, visualize the server in detail, and then think about them turning around and noticing you are waiting for them. Smile. At the beginning of this video, we learned that mimicking someone's body language and facial expressions can help you get what you want. Well, there's one facial expression in particular that you'll really want to focus on, and that's smiling. There are lots of reasons for this. First off, when you smile, you appear more courteous and likable. That's what a Penn State University study found. And when others perceive you in this positive way, they're more likely to do what you want. Secondly, when you smile at someone, they'll automatically smile back. Studies from a Swedish university found that other people's smiles suppress the control we usually have over our facial muscles and compel us to smile. We have an evolutionary innate drive to smile when we see a smile. It's actually really hard to frown when looking at a smile. And here's the really important part. When that other person catches your smile and subconsciously copies it, they'll feel more positive too. This is due to what Charles Darwin called the facial feedback response theory. The evolutionist theory suggested that it's the act of smiling that actually makes us feel better, rather than smiling being a result of feeling good. It's like a chicken and egg situation. What comes first, feeling good or smiling? According to Darwin, smiling comes first. And we all know that if you can help make someone feel good, they're more likely to do what you want. It's a win-win all around. Which of these tricks will you try and why? Let us know in the comments. And please give this video a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.